A very good morning students. In today's class, I'll be talking about the concept ionization enthalpy. The word enthalpy is new to you, but you can take it to be almost same as energy. The basic difference between the term energy and enthalpy lies in the measurement of energy at constant pressure. If we measure the energies at constant pressure, they are known as enthalpy. For chemistry, the word enthalpy becomes very important. Reason being, all your energy measurements are at constant pressure, which is the atmospheric pressure. All reactions that you do in the lab are in open beakers, test tubes, conical flasks. They're open. You take your reactions take place in an open container. So, the energy that you measure is also in an open container that is under the atmospheric pressure. So, all measurements of energy in chemistry are generally enthalpies. This ionization energy is represented as delta IH, where I is for ionization, H is always for enthalpy. Or it is also written as delta HI. Still, the H stands for enthalpy, I stands for the ionization energy. What do we mean by the term ionization? Ionization means removal of an electron. Which electron? The outermost electron is to be removed. When we talk about the outermost electron, it is to be removed where? To an infinite place. That is, it is not important where it goes. As long as it goes outside the bounds of the nucleus. So, you need to pull out this outermost electron and move it out of the influence of the nucleus. Apart from that, the units of ionization energy are always kilojoules per mole. Now, talking about uh, an atom. If you have the nucleus and you have shells around it and there are electrons in it, out of K, L and M shell, which electron do you think would be the easiest to remove? This one. Why so? Because it is farthest away from the nucleus. So the attractive pull that this electron faces is less. So the energy that you require to overcome this attraction force will be less. So the ionization energy would be less and the electron removal will become easy. So this is the electron that we are interested in if we have to remove it. Furthermore, since we are requiring energy, the energy is required, therefore the value is always positive. A positive value, which is the amount of energy required. After the electron is removed, the protons would always be more than the electron. Since electron is being removed, now the number of proton is more than the electrons, therefore it will always be a positively charged ion called as the cation will be formed. To represent this, let me take the equation representation. Let us take an atom X. An atom X in gaseous state, you require the amount of energy called as ionization energy to remove its outermost electron. Once that's done, that is the electron removed. On removing the electron, what do you end up in? You end up in a positively charged ion, which is a cation. The monovalent cation. Mono means single, valency. That is the charge monovalent cation needs to be formed. Now, there are certain conditions that we attach to X, which is the amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron off neutral, there's no charge, isolated gaseous atom. Now, why these three conditions are important? Whenever we talk about ionization energy, it is always the amount of energy required. So, it will always be on the reactant side since it is required. The amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from neutral isolated gaseous atom, the value is positive, the units are kilojoules per mole. Now why do we take these three is what I was trying to stress on. If you need to compare the ionization energy for different atoms, then in that case you have to fix a standard landmark from where you are going to begin the calculation of the energy. Supposing you have two atoms X and Y, one is a solid, the other is a gaseous state. If you need to remove the electron from Y, the first step that you require is to make it into a gaseous state so that it becomes isolated, not under the influence of the other atoms and then the amount of energy that is required to remove it would be called as the ionization energy. Whereas in case of X, which is already a gas, the removal of electron is going to be easier. The amount of energy here would always be less than this. So that's not the way to compare. For comparison's sake, we always use same conditions for the atoms for which you need to calculate the ionization energy. So I repeat the definition once and for all. The amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from neutral, no charge, isolated, 
gaseous atom is called as the ionization enthalpy. This value would always be positive and the units would be kilojoules per mole. So your delta H I values would be a positive value and the units would be kilojoules per mole. If I need to find out the factors on which the ionization energy depends, talking about the factors on which ionization energy depends would be these. The factors of ionization energy. The first factor is called as the NC, which is the nuclear charge. If the nuclear charge is more, what do you think would happen to the outermost electron? It would be tightly held. If it is tightly held, the removal of electron will require a large amount of energy. Hence, the ionization would increase. So, if the nuclear charge increases, the amount of energy required to remove the electron will increase. The attraction is increasing, so the energy required to remove it also would increase. Hence, ionization energy becomes directly proportional to the nuclear charge. Coming to the second factor, atomic radii. If the size of an atom is large, then in that case, the outermost shell is farther away from the nucleus. If the outermost shell is farther away from the nucleus, then the force of attraction between the last electron and the nucleus decreases. If the force of attraction is less, then the energy that you would require to remove that electron is definitely going to be less. So, if the size is more, attraction becomes less, removal of electron becomes easy, ionization energy required becomes less. So, size is more, ionization is less. Hence, it becomes inversely proportional to atomic radii. There's one upon. So, the atomic radii is large, ionization energy is less. Moving to the third factor, which is the shielding effect. Let me give you a quick recap. Shielding effect is the tendency of a subshell to protect the nuclear charge from reaching the outermost electron. If there are more such subshells, for example, on moving down the group, you have got incorporation of a D or an F subshell, which leads to this factor. Let me take this example. You have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Down the group, electronic configuration if it's like this, the outermost shell remains the same. Fourth, fifth, this outermost subshell remains the same, that is S, but the shell is increasing by 1. As you can see on moving down the group, there is an incorporation of 3D, 4D, 4F as well as 5D. Now, these subshells have a poor shielding effect. Poor shielding effect means they are unable to cover the nuclear charge from reaching towards the outside. Hence, the nuclear charge becomes effective. Because these subshells have got a poor shielding effect, a poor covering effect. That is, they are not able to protect the nuclear charge from reaching outside. Hence, the nuclear charge reaches towards the outside. So, whenever the shielding effect is large, the nucleus gets covered. If the shielding effect is large, then your nucleus gets, this is your nucleus, this gets covered properly. If it gets covered properly, then its attraction is not felt outside. If it is not felt outside, then the electron removal becomes easy. So, if the shielding effect is high, then in that case, the energy required is going to be less. So, it becomes inversely proportional. And this order of shielding effect is inversely proportional to ionization. I repeat once again, the shielding effect is nothing but the tendency of a subshell to cover the nucleus. If it is able to cover the nucleus, we say shielding effect is strong. A strong shielding effect would cause less attraction from the nucleus, which cause easier removal of the electron. So the ionization energy would be less if shielding effect is more. Hence, they are inversely related. So shielding effect is inversely related to the ionization energy. The fourth factor is the penetration power. There are certain subshells which are always found closer to the nucleus as compared to others. The order of penetration power is S subshell is always closer than P, D and F. But this is only applicable if the shell remains the same. That is, let's take, I'm talking about the fourth shell. 4S electrons would always be closer to the nucleus than 4P, then 4D and then 4F. If I need to remove the electrons, which out of them would be the easiest? It should be the 4F in comparison to 4S because 4S would always be closer to the nucleus if I'm talking about the same shell. So, 
more the penetration power difficult it is to remove the electrons so ionization energy is directly proportional to the penetration power of the subshell if the subshell is closer to the nucleus it is its electrons will be tightly held and the removal of electron is going to be tough hence ionization energy becomes directly proportional to the penetration power moving to the last but not the least this is one of the most important factors on which ionization energy depends is stable electronic configuration electronic configuration becomes stable under what circumstances a stable electronic configuration becomes stable if you have half filled or fully filled subshells what are half filled subshells a 2p 3 would be half filled 3d 5 d has a maximum capacity of 10 so if it 3d 5 it becomes half filled 3d 10 is a fully filled subshell so if the configuration ends here and this is the electron that you are concentrating on while removing them this is the amount of energy required would be large 3d 10 is a stable configuration half filled and fully filled subshells are having a stable state due to factors according to hans rule there are two factors symmetrical arrangement of electrons and exchange energy is large hence since these configurations are stable according to hans rule the removal of electron is definitely going to require a large amount of energy hence if you have 2p3 in the end from where you're looking for removal of electron this is going to require a large amount of energy so whenever you have a stable configuration the ionization energy automatically shoots up so i conclude my class with these five factors nuclear charge atomic radii shielding effect penetration power and the stable electronic configuration are the factors on which ionization energy depends with this i conclude my class thank you all the best